G'day, Chris here and welcome back to Clickspring. It's a tool that we reach for in the shop without a second thought. Yet the common hand file is so old that its origins are essentially unknown. And it was almost certainly one of the key tools used to make the Antikythera mechanism. For filing squares and perimeters, and most importantly, for forming those incredible teeth. So in this video, I'm going to hand cut a set of precision files suitable for constructing the mechanism, using the materials and methods as close as I can get them to those of the period. The Greek civilization was well into the Iron Age at the time of the device's creation. But the question of steel availability is not easily answered. Certainly, there was a form of crucible steel known as woods from the region we now call India. But there was also the technique known as case hardening, which essentially converts the surface of an iron object into steel. And tool artifacts recovered from the period suggest that this second option is the most likely of the two. Now I don't have any true wrought iron, but I do have this low carbon mild steel, which is fairly close. It has too little carbon to be quench hardened and it's soft enough to still be worked in a similar way to ancient wrought iron. So for the purpose of this exercise, I think it's a reasonable substitute. The first step is to take this raw stock and shape the basic file blanks. In recent history, this job was done on a massive grinding wheel. And although it would of course have been much slower and less convenient, similar hand-powered abrasive tools are known to have existed in antiquity. The surfaces of the blanks are now required to be filed perfectly flat, or stripped. Traditionally, the tool for this job is a stripping frame. I've made this one from oak and fastened it onto a board with dowel pins to keep it secure on the bench. It's a tool that operates a bit like a clockmaker's swing tool. No matter how much I roll the file on top of the work, it rotates so that the file will still cut reasonably flat. Okay, so with the file surfaces stripped, the next step is to form the teeth. And I need to make a few more custom tools to get this part of the job done. I've made a simple file cutting workstation based on the traditional approach but scaled down to suit the size of my shop. The file cutting anvil is a piece of scrap mild steel covered with a layer of tin that'll protect the file teeth during the cutting process. A register on the other end seats securely within this recess on a wooden base and I made a pair of leather straps to hold the blank onto the anvil. The file cutting chisels were made from this mild steel plate, again to simulate the wrought iron of the day. The chisel profile was formed using the grinder and belt sander, and then they were hardened using the traditional case hardening process. Now ordinarily case hardening is used to harden only the exterior of a part, but in this case I left the parts in the furnace long enough to ensure that they could essentially be through hardened. This allowed me to grind on a cutting edge without being concerned about reaching a soft core.
The chisels were then tempered to leave a pale straw cutter at the cutting edge. Okay, so after all that preparation, it's time to cut some file teeth, and they're formed in a remarkably simple way. The file blank is secured on the anvil using the straps, and I found that having a protractor resting nearby was enough of a guide for the tooth angle. The chisel is positioned on the workpiece, and then tilted back slightly to generate an appropriate rake angle for the tooth. A sharp hit with a hammer, and the first tooth is formed. A small amount of oil lubricates the surface, so that the chisel will move freely with only light fingertip pressure. And that first tooth now becomes the reference for the next tooth. The chisel blade is slid up against it, and then the subsequent teeth are laid down one after another, each time using the previous tooth to locate the next. Now there is of course a non-uniformity to the tooth spacing, but I think the most interesting thing to see up close is the side profile of the cutting tooth. One after another raised up above the surface, the geometry is exactly as you'd expect for a cutting tool, with rake and clearance clearly present. The blanks have been prepared with the antikythera mechanism in mind. The triangular blanks in particular have been shaped to match the known tooth angles of the wheels, and I'll talk some more about that towards the end of this video. Otherwise, the cutting proceeded as you'd expect. Most of the other surfaces were cut with a single cut pattern, but I did give some of the files a double cut pattern to investigate if that would make much of a difference, and the wider chisel was used to span the wider blanks. The files were then hardened using the same case hardening process that I used for the chisels, and then tempered to a pale straw. Now case hardening is a fascinating subject all on its own. There's a lot going on at the surface of the metal that's worth investigating in more detail. So I've separated that process out into its own video, be sure to check that one out next. Okay, so the moment of truth. Just how well does a shop-made file really cut? Well, I'm not about to give up my commercially made files anytime soon, but they do work quite well. They're probably equivalent to a modern number two cut file. And although the cutting action is not quite as sweet as a new modern file, it's a reasonable balance between metal removal and surface finish. They're durable, easy to handle, and certainly perform well enough to have constructed the original mechanism. In fact, I suspect that custom triangular files might be the key to understanding how the tooth profile was originally formed. I'll talk more about this in a later video. But the tooth root angles vary quite a bit across the device, from as low as 70 degrees to almost 90 degrees, with most sitting somewhere around 75 degrees. I've incorporated this tooth shape variation into the way that I've modelled the teeth, although I'd like to be clear that it's not quite as straightforward as this in the wreckage. There are many variations and inconsistencies, and the wreckage itself is in such poor condition that it's impossible to be certain about much of it. But nevertheless, it's definitely observable that in general, the smaller wheels have a wider root angle than the larger wheels. I interpret this as a deliberate design choice, made by the maker to give the gearing better clearance and a smoother engagement. 
and it's certainly possible that the range of root angles found in the device was formed by a single triangular file that was simply rolled on its axis to sculpt each tooth. The wreckage displays a fair degree of non-uniformity that you'd expect for teeth hand cut in this manner. But there's still quite a high degree of consistency of the root angles around each given wheel that suggests to me that the teeth were in fact formed by simply plunging the file into the workpiece much like I've done here and that the root angle variation observed across the gearing was in fact generated by a small selection of files cut specifically to construct this mechanism. Okay, so to wrap this one up, it's still very early days for this reconstruction. And I've still got a lot more research to do into the tool technology behind this machine. But I think you'll agree that it's worth it to see the picture of the ancient workshop that's starting to emerge of a single individual, or perhaps a small team, working with simple yet highly effective tools, developing the workshop traditions and refining the engineering practices that would one day shape the modern world. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Now if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to help me make more, then consider becoming a Clickspring patron. As a patron of the channel, you get immediate access to the patron series of videos. This includes the five videos from the wedge style hand vise build and at present the first four videos of the Byzantine sundial calendar build with more to come as the project progresses. In the most recent episode, I made the small assemblies that will one day predict eclipses in the mechanism. And don't forget that as a patron, you also get free access to the plans for the patron series projects. So you can follow along and build them yourself if you wish. Now as an added patron reward, for a limited time I'm also offering $10 off on your purchase of the Clickspring Fire Piston. It's a terrific little fire starting device, based on the prototype that I made some time ago, and it makes a great addition to any camping or hiking bag. So be sure to visit patreon.com forward slash clickspring to find out more. Thanks again for watching, I'll catch you on the next video.